In mid-1945, Hitler was already dead, Nazi Germany had surrendered, and World War II was nearing its end. However, Japan was still resisting, and on July 16, 1945, the first atomic bomb was successfully detonated, forever changing the world and haunting the life of Robert Oppenheimer, the brilliant theoretical physicist who led the top secret project and uttered the famous line taken from an ancient Indian sacred poem, Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Seventy-eight years have passed since that fateful day, and today, on this channel, you will learn a bit about the tormented life of Robert Oppenheimer, a brilliant physicist who made history with the infamous nickname the father of the atomic bomb, a title that still follows him to this day. Born on April 22, 1904, in New York, Oppenheimer grew up in a privileged environment. His family, of German-Jewish descent, did not practice Orthodox Jewish traditions. His childhood was marked by certain luxuries, with an art collection that included works by Picasso and Van Gogh. At the age of eight, he gained a brother named Frank, who also became a physicist. Young Oppenheimer's education was brilliant, excelling in school and entering Harvard. When he enrolled at Harvard University in 1922, he initially planned to become a chemist but ended up graduating in just three years. Later, he decided to switch to physics and specialize in experimental physics. However, he found that he didn't have great skills in the laboratory, leading him to choose theoretical physics instead. He studied physics at the University of Cambridge and in Germany, where he earned his doctorate. In 1927, at the young age of 22, he became friends with other brilliant scientists in Gothenburg, publishing numerous significant contributions to the newly developed quantum theory. Together with his mentor Max Born, these studies would later be known as the Born-Oppenheimer method and would be considered an important contribution to quantum molecular theory. Many considered him an eccentric man, with a difficult temperament and a devoted smoker. It was common to find him lost in periods of intense thought and concentration, forgetting to eat, which explained his extreme thinness. He was also prone to depression. In the 1920s, the scientist seemed to live on the fringes of the world. He didn't read newspapers or listen to the radio. He only found out about the Wall Street stock market crash while strolling with physicist and future Nobel Prize winner Herman L. Lawrence, six months after the event. In September 1927, he received a fellowship from the California Institute of Technology and returned to the United States. By the end of 1928, Oppenheimer received an offer for a physics faculty position at the University of Berkeley, California. However, he had been diagnosed with a mild case of tuberculosis and needed a few weeks of rest. Over the next 13 years, he worked at two universities, thriving as an advisor and collaborator to a generation of physicists who admired him, and continued to conduct important research in astrophysics, nuclear physics, and quantum theory. He made fundamental contributions to the theory of cosmic ray showers and was the first to draft articles hinting at the existence of what we now know as black holes. In the following years, he allocated part of his salary to support physicists fleeing from Nazi Germany. In 1936, he began a romantic relationship with a medical student and daughter of one of the literature professors at the University of Berkeley. In the same year, he was promoted to a full professor at the university after the death of his father in 1937. The inheritance of approximately $400,000 was divided between Oppenheimer and his younger brother, Frank. Like many intellectuals in the 1930s, Oppenheimer openly supported social reforms, which more conservative individuals at the time saw as a sign of sympathy towards communism. Part of the inheritance he received from his father went to support such causes, although Oppenheimer never officially joined the Communist Party of the United States. Some historians claim to have found evidence of the physicist's association with communism during the 1930s and 1940s. In 1939, Albert Einstein warned him about the terrible threat it would pose to humanity if the Nazi regime were to be the first to possess an atomic bomb. From that moment on, 
Oppenheimer became even more interested in the topic of creating such a weapon. He continued conducting research and writing scientific articles, some in collaboration with distinguished students. Years after a temporary relationship, Oppenheimer ended things with Jean Tatlock in 1939 and, in August of the same year, met Catherine Kitty Harrison, who would become his wife, in November 1940. The couple had two children. During that time, the world was in the midst of World War II, and the United States, although not yet directly involved, feared that the Germans might develop the first atomic bomb. As a result, they sought out the brightest scientists to dedicate their research to nuclear science. By 1942, Oppenheimer was already working at the Lawrence Radiation Laboratory at the University of Berkeley, California. He was highly enthusiastic about the nuclear bomb project. It was in June 1942 that the United States Army officially established an ultra-secret project that would begin in-depth research into the atomic bomb. The Army component responsible for the project was designated the Manhattan District and would soon become known as the Manhattan Project, in which American scientists and many who had escaped totalitarian regimes in Europe collaborated. The United States government initially allocated a budget of $6,000 for research, which would increase to $2 billion by the end of the project, equivalent to over $20 billion today. Oppenheimer's genius did not go unnoticed, and despite the government's lack of complete trust in him, he was formally invited to take charge of neutron calculations and was granted the title of coordinator. The government's distrust of him was expected, as the physicist did not hide his progressive leanings, and many of his loved ones were members of actively communist parties. The general in charge of the Manhattan Project decided to appoint Oppenheimer as its scientific director. The military man was impressed not only with his understanding of the practical aspects of atomic bomb design and construction but also because he was one of the most versatile minds he had ever encountered. Under Oppenheimer's leadership, laboratories were established in the Los Alamos desert where, alongside the brightest minds of his time in physics, he prepared to work on solving the problems involved in creating the atomic bomb. He ended up leading over 3,000 people, and though he faced challenges organizing such a large group, he quickly learned how to manage and administer on a large scale. In June 1943, he visited his ex-girlfriend, Jean Tatlock, who suffered from clinical depression. The FBI had suspicions about her. Oppenheimer spent the night at her apartment, knowing that he was being monitored by American Army agents. After that night, he had no further contact with her, and in January 1944, he received the news that she had committed suicide. This deeply affected him, but he remained steadfast in the Manhattan Project. In the following months, research continued to yield results, and after various preparations, a test site was chosen for the test that would take place on July 6, 1945, in a deserted area near the city of Alamogordo. This test was called Trinity and resulted in the first nuclear explosion ever witnessed on the planet. Oppenheimer's team had succeeded. They had turned a theoretical atomic bomb into a reality. Witnesses reported that at that moment, Oppenheimer was very proud and lamented that the weapon hadn't been available in time to be used against the Nazis. On August 6, 1945, just a few weeks after the Trinity test, the atomic bombing of Hiroshima occurred. And only three days later, on August 9, Nagasaki was bombed. This completely outraged Oppenheimer, as he felt that the second attack was entirely unnecessary and excessive. Many members of the project team shared the same opinion. The pride he felt witnessing the nuclear explosion during the Trinity test began to slowly transform into a terrible feeling of guilt, keeping him up at night. During a visit to President Harry Truman, Oppenheimer said, among other things, I feel I have blood on my hands. The president was completely taken aback, and when the scientist left, Truman, with an altered expression and visibly irritated, said he never wanted to see that son of a bitch again. Now, a new Oppenheimer adopting a pacifist position began to bother many, and quickly accusations arose against him of being a communist sympathizer. There had always been suspicions about him, 
and many of the people closest to him were active members of the Communist Party or had been during the 1930s and 1940s, including his own wife, his brother Frank, Frank's wife, his ex-girlfriend, and several of his students from the University of Berkeley. In 1953, Higher authorities no longer tolerated his dissent and suspended him from nuclear research programs. His security clearance from the Atomic Energy Commission was revoked, and he was accused of having connections to communism and of protecting suspected communists during the Trinity test. Although none of these accusations could be proven, the mere fact of being accused was enough to tarnish his reputation in the public eye. The scientific community was deeply shocked by the Atomic Energy Commission's decision. In the following years, he was interrogated and publicly humiliated as details of his private life were completely exposed. The smear campaign against him was so intense that the Federation of American Scientists came to his defense, claiming that the physicist was a victim of severe persecution. In 1963, in an attempt to improve Oppenheimer's image, President Lyndon Johnson awarded him the prestigious Enrico Fermi Award from the Atomic Energy Commission. In late 1965, he was diagnosed with throat cancer. He entered a coma on February 15, 1967, and just three days later, he passed away at his home in New Jersey at the age of 62. His body was cremated, and his ashes were scattered at sea. In 2014, the United States Department of Energy published the complete transcripts of the trials conducted against Oppenheimer, confirming that the physicist had always been loyal to his country and that he was indeed a victim of an unjust trial and a defamatory campaign to discredit him. The atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki in 1945 are estimated to have killed 100,000 people immediately and a total of up to 250,000 over time. Oppenheimer lived the rest of his life tormented and remorseful. Despite that, he was one of the main individuals responsible for amplifying the destructive capacity of humanity to levels never before imagined.